Success. We finally figured out our 1970 Dodge Dart four-speed interlock system for the transmission linkage. Been fighting this thing, I bet, for, I don't know, six to eight months trying to figure out this linkage. So let me kind of just back up and just tell everybody what we have. So this is our good friend Kevin's 1970 Dodge Dart. Four, this is a real 340 car, but it was originally an automatic. It's been converted over to a four-speed, factory-style four-speed. However, as many of you folks out there know, in 1970, they went to the, the switch on the column and they went to an interlock system. Well, it turns out in 1970, the interlock system was unique. And for whatever reason, probably for good reason, they, I think they changed the design, some of the linkage. So being that it was converted, Kevin and myself and several people have looked high and low and basically trying to find what we would call unobtainium parts. So Kevin has spent a lot of money on researching and trying to find those parts. And the, the we have several shop manuals. So I called Brewers and Brewer said, yeah, that's the one piece, that interconnect rod that goes from the column to the lever on the column. You can see right there, this right here, this goes to another Z-bar. So it's basically got two Z-bars. It's got the Z-bar for the clutch and it has a Z-bar for the, for the interlock system. So I also I want to back up and say I want to thank Jamie from Dead Dodge Garage. He took the time to call me and go over a few possibilities of what, what the issue was. But Brewers said that that's the one piece that nobody remanufactures because basically it was a it was a day two thing where people would put headers, obviously, back in the day, and they would just chunk because the headers wouldn't work with all that. They would just get rid of that and they'd safety wire that lever down. So that brings us to the year 2024. Finally, I think we got it figured out. So Kevin bought another rod with an adjuster because I told him to, and I said, this has to be it. This rod has the adjuster and all the email or all the, excuse me, internet research that I could find, I thought this is what, what it was, what it needed to have. The problem was when you hook this up to the, on the side that kicks it up to the steering column, this thing was a good inch and a half to two inches long, too long. And I, you can see I, that was with bottoming it out, bottoming it out with the adjuster. The other thing is, you come over and look at the schematic over here on our shop table. I don't know if I got it here. And of course, this is our 1970 Dodge service manual. So it's for Challenger and Dart. Okay, so going to the four speed here, this is for the Dart. And this is the Z bar I'm talking about for the interlock. It shows the column from on the, the lever coming from the column and it shows the z-bar right here uh, exclusively for the interlock system now i believe there's an interlock system when i was talking to jamie obviously the automatic had one too i'm not sure if it used the same z-bar setup but there were all kinds of things that we talked about what it could have been what really got me confused when you see this schematic here on the this z-bar it shows somewhat of a banana. You see the, the banana shape on that lever and where it goes up to the transmission here, up to the lever on the transmission. Ours is straight. Our Z-bar is straight. So you've got the, the Z-bar from the clutch that's also in the way when it comes between here and here. You've also got your clutch Z-bar and it would not go around it. There was no way the Z-bar from the clutch was directly in the way. So, we put our heads together. I thought I had this thing maybe back. I tried this thing every which way but loose. And it just, it was just, it wouldn't clear. So I looked at some of the things that Kevin got from somebody. I'm not sure if it was, uh, he, he bought some parts from some somebody, as we all would do. He's trying his best. He actually did a really good job of rebuilding the column. So I'm going to put this thing on the rack, and I'm going to show you from the bottom what we finally got and it 
it works magnificently. Now, I will tell you, the shifter, when I get ready to shift it, the shifter is, and I've got it all adjusted with the pin, but we had a shim come out of this shifter. I'm probably going to put another shifter in it because this thing is out of whack, and I don't rebuild shifters. So I'll talk to Kevin about that. But let me get it on the rack and show you. Okay, here's our interlock system. So basically, this is your Z-bar for the clutch, this, this one right here. And then this is, I'm calling it a Z-bar. They, they call it actually a torque shaft assembly. So for, for schematic sake, and let's just call it a torque shaft. So this is the torque shaft. It attaches to a bracket on the bell housing and then on the frame. And then it has this lever here that basically takes it, this is the rod that nobody can find. Now let me tell you what I did here. This rod, I got to put it on there and seeing how far off it was. What happened was this rod came out a little bit further to about right here. It was actually about a half an inch off. I'm gonna tell you what I did. I put this thing in the vise. I marked where I wanted the bend point to be and I tweaked it and it fit like a glove. Now it is probably a little close to the Z bar. It's something we gotta watch. Maybe we can tweak it a little bit more, but now it absolutely, we had to make it a, we had to make an adjustment on the reverse uh, shift rod right here. So if you see how this works, this is your torque shaft here. So it's coming from this rod, this lever coming up to that lever on the column. And then it goes from the torque shaft, it goes over here. This is your forward uh, reverse lockout rod. It comes off the lever of the 833. And then of course, your shift lever for reverse. So once we got this in, we lacked it. We just had to adjust the, the rod right here where it put just a little bit more pressure on the lever, basically pulling back harder on the, uh, on the lever on the steering column. And now it goes in and out of lock of perfectly. So basically you have to put it in reverse to get it to go all the way in to, to turn the key ignition off. That's the way I understand it. You got, if I'm wrong, Hey, let me know. Let, please let me know. But that's the way I understand it. To get it, to unlock it, get it out of reverse, obviously, and then you, you turn the key and then you pull, pull it out, of, you turn the key and then you pull it out of reverse. But that's how you lock it. And that is the interlock system. So, yes, I made a little tweak. I mean, I, I don't know what else to do here. Um, I've tried and spoke and looked and this has been a six month thing and it looks like I believe that we've got it right. It shifts smooth. That there's no binding or hanging. Now the shifter, yeah, the shifter is the shifter is a different deal. And yes, I adjusted the shifter properly with the pin. But I had while I was adjusting it, I had these little shims come out of it, and they just fell out. So I think this shifter may have seen better days. I know nothing about them. I just know that we've got to get it right. So um, I'm going to let it down and I'm going to show you guys how this thing works. Okay, I'm in the car. And if you come over here, look, Trisha, come over here. I'll, I'll show everybody. The key is in the lock position. So it's locked. We're good here. I'm in reverse. So now turn the key. Now I'll go over and look at the lever. You saw that move. Now what I'm gonna do is I, you'll see I'm gonna go to, when I get ready to turn the key back to go in the off position, I can't get it to go into the lock, so I'm gonna have to put it in reverse. So now I'm locked. You don't come over here, you can see I'm back in the lock position. So I'm not an expert on that. I've never dealt with one of these before. So, obviously, that's, from what I understand, that's how it works. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know. But it seems to go in, there's no binding, there's no, the shifter of second and third and all that stuff. So now I can turn the key again. Now I can get it out of reverse. And again, you'll watch the lever over there. Yep, there it goes. Now, let me show you. If I'm not in reverse, I can't, I can't move this. I can't get it to. 
I can't get the, the car out of reverse right now because it's locked, right? So turn the key and get it out. Now, if you look over here on the column, I can't get it to go, it won't go into the fully locked position. I'm gonna have to put it in reverse. And there it is, it's locked. So, I hope this helped folks. If I've got this wrong, let me know. <laughs> this has been something. Yeah, we're gonna have to probably put another shifter in this car. I've got every, all the rods adjusted. Um, and you can feel the transmission feels fine, but the, you can feel in the shifter itself, it's just, it's horrible. But we're getting closer on this dart. Um, Kevin, like Glenn, has been very, very patient, and I appreciate him very much. So Kevin has a really nice uh, collection of Oldsmobiles that we like working on as well. So this is his first Mopar, and we, wanted to, we want this thing to be as awesome as possible. So hope everybody got something out of the 1970 A-Body Mopar interlock system. Have a good Sunday, everybody.